it's never too late to learn about herbs. You can just start so small and so many people just have such amazing stories around it. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Well, this episode is a bit different from any that I've done before. Today, we're peeling back the curtain to look at what it's like to work behind the scenes here at Herbs with Rosalie, specifically in the area of community support. My guest is Karen Rose, who's been answering people's questions here for several years now. And I have no doubt that many of you have received a response from her after writing into us with comments or questions. For those of you who don't already know her, Karen Rose provides student services and community support here at Herbs with Rosalie. As a person who loves to interact with students and the herbal community, she answers your emails, your direct messages through social media, your social media comments, including YouTube comments, and so much more. She also directly supports students enrolled in our online courses. Karen lives in sunny San Diego. She's an herbalist and aromatherapist and has a business degree and years of leadership training. Her herbal training includes dozens of herbal classes and conferences with a variety of teachers, including the two-year Herbal Medicine for Women professional program. Well, Karen, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Rosalie. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. It is fun. I'm really excited to have you on. I'm really excited for the behind the scenes. And I'm also really looking forward to hearing your herbal path story and the many ways that you've been uh, journeying through the world of herbs and how that has brought you here today. Well, it's a little bit of an interesting story, I guess. I um, like to start, I kind of had an outdoorsy childhood. Uh, everywhere we lived, my favorite memories are being outside. I loved being outside in nature. And as a little kid in Virginia, we used to, um, well, I remember sledding down this big hill, big grassy hill. And in the summer, we'd use cardboard. And in the winter, of course, a sled. Um, but I remember hunting for four-leaf clovers with um, my little friends. And mm. that was just so I don't know, that memory comes up a lot. And uh, we'd walk through the woods to the lake. And then later on, uh, I lived in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And I think just about everything we did was outside there. We hiked, we were fishing, we went skiing. And even walking to school was these big towering walls of snow on either side. (laughs) And we'd walk down the way. So just being outside like that, I think really... um, kind of paved that path for me in a, in a sense. And in Northern California, as a teenager, we lived in a small house, but it was surrounded by 21 rose bushes. And I, I counted them. It was so fun. I absolutely loved every single one of them. I think I might have named them at that time, but mm. I don't know all their names now. I have a terrible there. <laughs> <laughs> the beginnings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then fast forward to my 20s, and I was browsing around a beauty supply store of all places, and I found these interesting little, um, they were like little matchbook looking things, little card paper board that, um, it turns out they were essential oils uh, by Robert Tisserand. And I was so intrigued by these things and I wouldn't, I bought them, but I didn't want to use them until I knew what it was. And so I researched the library. This was before the internet. Um, So I was researching in the library and everything I was reading about just kept leading me to the plants. Uh, But I did end up studying essential oils for uh, many years with great books like 
um, Patricia Davis has a good one and Jean Rose. And then I also study with teachers like Andrea um, Bouget. And, but again, the more I researched, the more I read, everything kept leading me to the actual plants, not the distillation and not all the other little things that we love, uh, but the plants. And it kept calling me and they kept calling me. And so I, um, just found more books and mostly was reading Rosemary Gladstar, of course. <laughs> and I um, found online classes and I devoured every single class at Learning Herbs. And <laughs> then I studied with some other places. And some of my closest friends um, encouraged me, I guess is the right way to say it, <laughs> um, to teach some classes. And so I would teach in my kitchen. And then um, I made products for the spa that's down the street from me. And then I worked with clients um, in my home and mostly online though. And that was about seven years, I guess. And I completed a two-year program um, for herbal medicine for women. And I met some incredible herbalists along the way and herbal conferences and study groups. And while I still use essential oils in small amounts, I really lean more into whole plant herbalism and sustainability of the earth. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Karen. It's really fun to hear herbalist stories and how they came to be. And um, I love that the whole plants really spoke to you. And I also love that you have the background in aromatherapy and essential oils because we rely on that uh, at Herbs with Rosalie and Rooted Medicine Circle, but more about that later. Um, Karen, if you don't mind, I kind of want to interject right now to share how we met. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. That, it's kind of a fun story. <laughs> yeah, because we, we met along the way. Um, well, first of all, I guess I, I'll just go ahead and mention that you were in my first ever Taste of Herbs course, which was one of my very first online courses, and that was back in 2013. So at the time of this recording, I was like 11 years ago. So you were in that um, very first um, cohort of that. And then... Um, but we didn't like officially meet back then. We met. This is kind of, I just recently told the story of how I met Emily Hahn and it's very similar. Um, in that, I wish we had a story of like, we were walking through a rose garden, naming our favorite rose plants when suddenly we saw a kindred spirit. Um, but the story is actually that we met on Facebook. <laughs> so we don't have the meet cute story of the rose bush, but um, I'm glad that we did meet. And how that came about was that um, we had just released Alchemy of Herbs. This is like 2017. And we started a Facebook group to like support conversations and everything around the book. And that group just like got like, it just blew up. Like there was tens of thousands of people in that group for, at a very quick rate, which was super fun. And admits those tens of thousands of people, I kept noticing this one person who was responding to a lot of questions in a super friendly and helpful way which was, of course, Karen Rose. And so I just noticed that for quite a while. And then eventually um, she got brought on the team and started help right, uh, moderating the group and everything. So for us, like we've probably been working together for like a little bit less than seven years, maybe around seven years now, which, wow, time flies. So something like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we met on Facebook, but since then we've been working together a lot over the years and um, and a bunch of different capacities. And so let's talk about that, Karen, and um, and what your role here is at Herbs with Rosalie. Sure, yes, that was so much fun, to, that little interaction and being in your first class. I loved it. Uh, so here at Herbs with Rosalie, I am the student services coordinator and I provide community support for the um, group at large as well. This involves a variety of fun interactions with folks. And when your fans, Rosalie, all of you listening right now, write in with questions, I usually answer them or at least point you in the right direction. <laughs> and so also share all the cool, funny, sweet messages with Rosalie and the team. And when students... I want to accentuate that. Sorry to interrupt you. But I do want to accentuate <laughs> that because I think we have the perfect combination of like questions come in through direct messaging, through emails, through YouTube comments, through all sorts of things, social media comments, you're kind of like the first front on that. Like you're the one 
that's answering a lot of those questions, which I used to do that back in the day. I was the first, you know, I was the only person on the team. So that was what I did. And then it just got to a point where I couldn't possibly do that and continue to like make content and teach and that sort of thing. So, um, but one thing I love about it is that Karen, you really know, like when somebody writes in with an especially sweet comment or, you know, has whatever, or something's really directed towards me, I see all comments, like you forward all of those to me. So I get to still like stay in touch and hear and respond to people too. So I like that you alert me to those things, but um, I also really like that you get to answer most of those questions just because again, I just wouldn't be able to and do what else I do. So anyway, sorry to interrupt, but. No, I that's good. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. And I love sharing the the sweet, funny and um, quirky messages uh, because it's, it's a whole team here. It's not just me. It's not just Rosalie. It's all of us. And mm -hmm. uh, we all need to kind of do different parts to have everything work so well. So I just wanted to, to just elaborate just a tiny bit that when students need anything, I help them uh, with usually helping direct them where they want to find the information they're looking for. And also, I really love to get their ideas implemented when they have a great um, way to help the class and help the uh, student experience. That's a fun thing to do. And then lastly, within the bigger courses, I assist you in uh, live events and facilitate a few optional uh, events to build a stronger student community within our programs. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. All those are great things. I like how you phrased all that because, um, yeah, you are always passing along great tips. Like there, if someone has a suggestion or a tip, it does not go unnoticed here. You're always passing those along. And um and how you support live events, like there's just something very reassuring to me that like you're always on the line, you know, like I used to just be all by myself, um, you know, if, like all by myself, obviously students are there too, but if like something technically happened wrong or I'm kind of relying on other people to make sure my audio is okay, but you're always there. And the other thing is that you always laugh at my jokes. I don't know if that's always forced, but when I make jokes about um, whatever that may be, or I just, you know, have cats or Tori Amos or whatever <laughs> eclectic thing pops up in there. There's Karen with her big smile. And I always appreciate that too. Um, so, yeah. Well, so, here's yeah, a little secret. The little secret. I am actually easily entertained and I love to laugh. So there yeah. you go. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> we, we make a good team in that. <laughs> Um, so within your role of answering questions and being that community support role here at Herbs with Rosalie, I'm curious, what are either one or some of the most commonly asked questions that you get? Well, I actually was looking at this recently, uh, and this... Uh, we actually receive quite a variety of questions here at Herbs with, with Rosalie. There's just a really wide expanse of questions. Um, but if I were to loosely group them together, I would say that where to find things probably comes up the most. That's what students write in about. That's what other people write in about. Fans write in about just hunting, just needing a little assistance with hunting something down that they're looking for. Um, so I feel like a little bit. What do you mean by that? Like, do you mean like answers to herbal questions or like where they find the cute tea mugs that I post photos of or <laughs> where, yeah, like what kind of things are people looking for? Well, students are like looking for something like they remembered in one case, um, someone wrote in recently about trying to remember where she saw the lymphatic system covered in cooling mm. inflammation. Mm. And so I, um, went to go look it up myself and I found it. Woo. Yay. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of familiarity with all the programs, so it's pretty easy to go hunt something down and find the specifics for someone. Um, but fans often write in about specific uh, podcasts they're looking for. Oh, mm. I remember something about a tea and an experiment. And uh, I can say, mm. oh, chamomile, <laughs> strong versus weaker. And mm you know, beverage, pleasant. And so people will ask different questions, but it's a lot of where to find things and where to find herbs is also a, a big question too. So basically you're saying we have a lot of content here at Herbs with Rosalie and people are <laughs> wondering where to find it all. Yeah. And it is uh, spread out quite a bit too. So it's with um, 
you know. Yeah, I can see that like if students, like if it's a student, it could have been in one or more of the classes that they took, or it could be on the website, or it could be in the podcast. So I have articles written on other sites. So yeah, I can see that. Then there's yeah, the books, recipes, of course. The books. Yeah, books. Recipes are really challenging for me to find. <laughs> Those are all over. Here, here's what I do when I'm because I look up my own recipes. I just type in the recipe and then I type in Rosalie de la Forêt, and that just like pulls it up every time. So that's my secret trick. I learned that trick from you in a live class when someone answered and you said that. But it's like, but if the recipe is in a class and it's not published online, which I have most of my recipes are in the books or the class, you know, in classes, that's not, it can't happen, but it has to be like one that's published online. Yes. Yes. Um, I'd say another big category are what I call light tech questions. Uh, Mm. They tend to come in waves. Like if we have something that we just um, offered for download, some people need a little help learning how to download something or there's a little, um, just a little snag that they run into, Uh, how to see the show notes for a podcast, um, how to join a webinar, those types of things come in. Mm. Um, and then I, we talked about this before, but I just wanted to highlight that not everything's a question. We receive uh, many heartfelt thank you notes and those just really make our day. I always share those. They're so, I mean, I share all the many things with, with Rosalie because it's so easy just to click her little name in, in the program. But I um, just really love to share things that make us smile. Yeah. I love the sweet comments too. We often get sweet comments and then like, we also get to hear people's herbal stories. Yes. You know, like we've heard so many over the years. One that like just pops in my head right now is I remember hearing from someone, this was actually a few years ago, but um, we had sent out something about rose hips and they wrote in about how um, they remember picking rose hips in uh, during World War II in England mm-hmm. and wrote in about this long story that was just, I felt like such an honor to read that. And yeah, we often hear stories about like, you know, I remember when my grandmother did this and this. So yeah, the, the hearing from people is definitely, um, yeah, just really fun and meaningful. Yeah. That's one of, I mean, I love to help people too. That's part of my nature, but I really do love getting to interact with people like that and hearing, I don't know, it feels like such an honor, like you said, to witness someone's journey. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing those commonly asked questions. Um, with that in mind, with all the like ways that you respond to people, like this is like your chance. I'm like handing you the mic. What would, <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance, Karen. What do you wish that people knew already? Like, what do you wish people knew the most? <laughs> well, I can answer that in a lot of ways, but I actually have two um, specific things. Uh, one is that uh, I really wish people knew when they were writing in asking for health advice that the best way to get your to get help with your personal health is actually to work directly with an herbal practitioner. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely love to answer questions and interact with students. I sometimes wish I could spend an hour with each email, but I'm pretty sure Rosalie would fire me. Um, <laughs> but, I, um, I wouldn't be able to answer all the requests if um, that happened also. I mean, we have to be efficient too. Yeah. But an actual herbal practitioner is there to get a complete health history with you and to really dive into the details and work with you on your uh, root causes. And it's just something that we can't do very well through email. Mm-hmm. And so I... Um, just really wish that people knew that part. And Rosalie shares her preferred practitioners um, on her website in the contact us section, just for future reference. Nice. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point. And of course, when people write in, you know, they often write in thinking it's like, it's such a simple question, like what herb is good for eczema or what herb is good for this? And yeah, if we don't know a full health history, which would take like an hour to get from a person, we can't really give advice like ethically or, you know, it would even be effective. So I know you do your best to like, if I have an article about that issue on the site, you'll point that to them. Um, But yeah, it's always, it's always best to work with a practitioner. And the, the great thing about that 
is that they are so approachable and it's so easy to do. Like Karen said, I have the list on my site of my preferred practitioners. So many herbalists do long distance consultations. There are many clinical herbalists who have schools who offer free consultations like through the school. So there's not a lot of hurdles um, if you're really looking for, like if you really want to work with herbs for your health, it's so possible. So, and yeah, I just, as you know, as you know, Karen, I would not want to like, you know, somebody wrote in with a seemingly like simple question about like, what herb do I take for eczema? We would not want to point them in the wrong direction, you know, if we don't know like their health history or whatever, you know, like we wouldn't want to do that. So yeah, so that's, that's a good one. And luckily we get to point people in those right directions when they write in. Cause obviously when they write in wondering about like whatever is good for eczema, um, we can like point them in that right direction. So that's good. Of course, I'm using we as a very like royal situation. That's Karen. Karen does that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So another thing I wish um, people knew yeah, is how amazing all the courses are here. Cool. You go deep into herbal education in such an easy to understand way. That's something that I hear from students all the time. And there's always something to learn for all levels. Um, something in particular that I see often that I'd like to address here for everybody is that our elders are writing in saying they would take a class if they were younger. And students often share their age with me when they write in just casually. They tell me, you know, that they're this age or that age and give me all their numbers. And I love the stories they tell with that. There was a lady who wrote in, she just moved to a whole, she uprooted her entire life after 77 years of living somewhere, uprooted her entire life and started a brand new garden and brand new class and an herbal class. And she wanted to help other people. And I just loved her story. She inspires me on a regular basis because I remember that story. Mm -hmm. And we have students from the older teens. I can't remember who it was, but there was a young woman, I think she was about 17, who was so excited to join a class. And she wrote in and um, all the way up to people in their 80s. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage you, if you're interested in, in herbs, just jump in. You can just watch the podcast for a while. You can take a, the Herbal Jumpstart class. And we have other classes that appeal to different people, but just knowing that it's never too late to learn about herbs. You can just start so small and uh, so many people just have such amazing stories around it. Hmm. Oh, I love that, Karen. Thank you. Well, Karen, I often refer to you as being the only extrovert on the team. I think that <laughs> continues to be true, which is great for your community support role and all the interactions that you do with people. Um, and so my question, my next question to you is, what is the best part of your role in community support? I think you gave it away. Oh, darn it. <laughs> darn it. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I, I probably also have given, given it away as well with my other answers to things, but I really, really love interacting with students. Again, mm -hmm. I love getting to know people and working with students, and I also really am, um, enjoy improving that student experience that I spoke about, and uh, that's just my favorite my favorite part. <laughs> I can tell because you're like also such an advocate for the students. Like, again, you're like often, you know, telling me or if it's about rooted medicine circle, me and Emily about just like feed, student feedback, how we can improve things. And yeah. And you're often like a champion for them too. Like if we're like, ah, I don't know, you like, you're like, nope, <laughs> we're going to keep pursuing this. <laughs> so yeah. Well, we wouldn't be here without them. <laughs> So absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad they have you as their spokesperson and yeah. And that just how dedicated you are to it. You're just always in service. It feels like of the students. So I would like to think that everything within your role in Herbs with Rosalie is absolutely perfect. <laughs> um, but I am imagining that there must be like some challenges here or there. So would you mind sharing one or more of challenges that you face and, and what that's like? We're doing like, this is real gritty behind the scenes. I'm not just throwing softballs. Let's, let's hear it. 
<laughs> and, and don't tell, I don't want to hear like the interview question where you're like, the most challenging thing is that I care too much. Like, don't, I, like, let's hear it. We're totally going to hear it. If it's not, if it's not something I want to hear, I'll just edit it out. I'm just kidding. I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to edit it out. <laughs> well, it, it is kind of a little bit like you said, but um, the most challenging thing is I really do uh, like to answer people's questions. And sometimes I know that that's, uh, you know, maybe not the most efficient thing to be doing. And so I do need to like balance how much information. And uh, if somebody has a question that is straightforward, obviously that's easy. Just get them the answer and move along. But when people write in those wonderful stories, <laughs> that's a little harder to say something, you know, meaningful. Uh, but brief and not launch into a big long, oh, let's have a big conversation and get to know each other over email. So <laughs> that's, it feels that's actually a challenge for me because I really do like to interact uh, with people. Hmm. I will accept that. I could see that just knowing you and knowing what it's like too. Cause again, like people might write in with something like that to them seems like a very simple question but it's like we get such great questions of people really thinking about things and like really to fully answer their question it could be an hour-long class right but we can't do that every time <laughs> but we do pay attention um we for do. example like the we did that survey last fall and we asked people what they wanted to hear and karen and i both looking at that survey we both came back with the same thing it was like so many people asked about how to win over herbal skeptics in their life. We just saw that over and over again. And so we came up with last week's podcast um, to address that very issue. So um, we do try to like give that time, but yeah, when someone writes in with a really good question, yeah, it's, we can't give like an hour long response every time. <laughs> yeah. There are way too many questions here. <laughs> so I, I kind of thought that your most challenging thing might be when people are mean. Because let's just be honest, like that happens. I, so I'm kind of curious, like, all your thoughts around that, Karen. Like, how many people right now are nice versus mean, and what's that like? <clears throat> that, you know, how do you deal with people who are mean? And I'm sure there's like varying levels of mean too. There's like someone who's just like frustrated and maybe isn't like putting on their nicest, um, polite words versus someone who's like super rude. So anyway, I want you to spill the dirt. What happens? What happens with all of this? <laughs> all right. So spoiler alert. Thank goodness. 99% of the people who write in are kind. And oh, I, I like that. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you just said, what we do with the mean kids <laughs> uh, depends <laughs> on you know how mean, what level of mean, what is actually going on. Uh, if someone has a legitimate concern that can be addressed and perhaps they were just having a bad day, maybe they just didn't use all their nice words, I just detach myself from their emotions and my emotions and I just answer them and provide the best support that I can. If a person is really rude, like flat out rude and probably doesn't even have, it's more like a rant, isn't even got a question in there, um, we just remove them from our systems because that's just not something we need to work with. Yeah. And sometimes we give them like a chance. Like if it's like, oh, let me address the problem. Yeah. If there's if a people, problem for sure. Yeah. But if people are consistently rude, I think that's just like protection for you. Like I don't want that for you at all. Um, so we're just kind of like, yeah, you know, this is not a good fit. Like this place is just not a good fit for them. So yeah. Um, I do love that you like you do try and you assume the best in people and I know you do and you often like if you're on the fence you'll like forward something to me so I can take a look at it yeah. but yeah if people are mean it's like we do all the things it's like we remove them from the email list we do all the things there's like no like as just a way of having a strong boundary that makes sure that Karen wants to stick around so yeah most people are so nice though so that's I'm I love the herbalists so I'm glad yeah. we have all the kindness. That's what I'm so grateful for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to talk a little bit about Rooted Medicine Circle because the day that this publishes is our last day of our enrollment period for 2024. 
And Rooted Medicine Circle is a really big part of our programming at Herbs with Rosalie. It's this nine-month course where we teach people about how to make potent herbal medicines as well as naturalist skills. And it's kind of our biggest deal here at Herbs with Rosalie on many different levels. So yeah, so it's a big deal. And the you know having the enrollment period open is a big deal. I'm curious, like we don't know yet how many emails because we're, <laughs> we are um, recording this a little bit earlier. But like, if you could think of like past launches and stuff, like how many emails do you think? And like emails, message, direct messages. I don't know. How many people do you think you respond to during the launch? I lost track. <laughs> it's hundreds. hundreds. I, yeah. I remember doing this. Many hundreds. Many time. hundreds. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if you said a thousand. Oh, really. Yeah. I remember losing track. It was so many. Um, and my fingers are flying during that time. <laughs> yep. Zipping this way and that, peeing away, answering. And luckily, a lot of questions are similar, so I don't have to think too much. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, but it's so exciting, too. <laughs> mm, glad you feel that way. Yeah, and it's nine days total. I just counted that up. Um, nine oh. days total. We. <laughs> At Herbs with Rosalie, you know, we're all about like having breaks and taking the weekend, but there's no weekend during enrollment week. So we're full on nine days straight. And there's like some over, over spill too. It's not like it just ends one day. It kind of takes a while to fizzle yeah, out. No, it doesn't. That's the one thing that's really interesting um, is a timeline horizon for different people on the team. My timeline horizon is definitely more at the tail end of enrollment periods mm -hmm. and a lot of questions come in that first week or month depending on the course uh after enrollment has ended yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you're involved in rooted medicine circle um in many ways and uh i'm curious what is your favorite part of being involved with rooted medicine circle uh so easy hands down my favorite part of i call it rmc but root medicine circle rmc uh is watching the transformation uh that students go through in this very full program like i get to see them when they're first asking their questions before they even enroll what are they um you know curious about what is it that's um you know on their minds when they're getting they're deciding to join and they're often, you know, a little nervous, like the average person before they jump into something new. And so I get to see from there all the way through to the ending of when they write in all these wonderful things at the end of the uh, program. And it's just really heartwarming, I guess. Um, it's so touching um, to every single year to see similar themes, but very individual stories. And so that's definitely my favorite part. That's my favorite part too, Karen. <laughs> that's absolutely, yeah. Like you said, it's kind of easy, like, you know, hands down. You know, the first year we did Rooted Medicine Circle was 2021. So we were in the pandemic. And I remember there was, you know, a lot of people really struggling through that time. Um, mm -hmm. It was just a hard time. But I remember like with the students in Rooted Medicine Circle, I was just like, I felt so inspired by what I was seeing, those transformations that, I don't know, I just had such a great, like, perspective on, like, the future of the world. Like, it just, I had so much, like, hope. And that is just, like, reinstated every single year of just watching people make that transformation because it's just, like, we're on the ground level of seeing people's culture shift and their ideas about nature shift and and also just the empowerment they get through making these herbal medicines. So I'm with yeah. you. It's an amazing thing to be able to be witness to. And it's, <laughs> I don't, for me, it's like what I really think of like my purpose as an herbalist and like what makes me the happiest as an herbalist is watching that happen. Yeah. And the confidence that expands and overflows and just such a, um, just meaningful ways and the different ways people take it. Different students go in different directions and they just feel just so empowered, like you said, ready to do the things that they've always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, um, love it. 
so I, I was mentioning that you're involved in Rooted Medicine Circle in all these different ways. Like as we've already discussed, you answer student questions, you're there during live events to help support. And you're also, uh, you also like run some things too. You run the meetups where people get to um, just hang out and talk with like-minded people. So that's an important part. And then this year you're also hosting a braiding sweet grass book club breeding sweet grass by robin wall kimmer and mm. so i know you're excited about that we did that for the first time last year and it was amazing just to be able to like discuss these really important themes with uh, people and yeah it was one of my favorite things about last year's so i'm really excited it's happening this year and i just love to hear like your thoughts on the book club and i don't know like maybe i might have prepped you ahead of time and said how about you bring a good quote that you like? <laughs> so we can do that too. <laughs> super. I am super excited to be leading the Braiding Sweetgrass book club this year. Uh, this is such an amazing book. Even if, if you've never read it, it is really great by Robin Wall Kimmer. And it's also an audio book. And there's a variety of ways you can get to the... Um, this wonderful book. There's so many amazing, deep, rich material and Robin's way of writing is so eloquent and so juicy with her terminology and the different word choices. And she paints such beautiful pictures, uh, really real, beautiful in the sense of deep and full of life to me. Um, she touches on some important topics that may not be so pretty uh, or beautiful in the sense that we typically think of that, but they're beautiful in the fact that they're human, very human experiences. And so I'm looking forward to diving deeper into um, this book with the students in Root Medicine Circle. And the, I don't know how you expect me to actually pick just one quote, Rosalie. Know, she is so <laughs> quotable. I don't think I could have done it. <laughs> That's why I had to like tell you ahead of time, like, why don't you bring a quote along with you? Because, you know. Yeah. So there's a lot of amazing and wonderful quotes in this book. Um, but I did really get drawn to one particular one over and over. So I'm excited I excited to hear what it is. It's a surprise to me. Is it a surprise? Well, actually, I don't know if we talked about this one, so it might be a surprise. So it is in the... Um, chapter called the consolation of water lilies and it's at the very end of that chapter and robin writes we are showered every day with gifts but they are not meant for us to keep their life is in their movement the inhale and exhale of our shared breath that imagery oh my goodness our work and our joy is to pass along the gift and to trust that what we put into the universe will always come back. Mm. I just, oh, that's just one of many so touching um, things that she talks about. And there's a bigger story around that, but I figured we'd save that to the, mm -hmm. the actual book club. The actual book club to discuss it? Oh. Because um, I could talk for a long time about this book. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much fun in the book club just to hear other people's takes on things. And um, last year, we spent a lot of time, a lot of people really um, resonated with gratitude. And we talked a lot about gratitude in the club, which then transformed how we do things at Herbs with Rosalie. Now we begin all of our court, all of our live classes begin with sharing gratitudes. And even our team meetings also start with sharing gratitudes. And that just, that came from the book club. So it was a pretty, um, and there's like, I, I don't know, as I say it, I'm like, oh, we share gratitudes. But there's, you know, the stories behind that and just all of the emphasis that Robin Wall Kimmer puts on that is just, you know, it's a deeply transformational thing that we can do is to focus on gratitudes and, and the joy we get, not just from sharing our own, but from hearing other people's and just right. how that feeds on so much. So yeah, that's. I'm really excited for the book club. Yeah, I, I really, um, I want to emphasize too that I'll have a guide for us at the meetings for the book club, but 
um, that's just to provide a framework and to keep the conversation going. But what I really love to do is encourage students to bring their ideas to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's where the magic happens because mm -hmm. we're creating a community of like-minded people who feel comfortable with discussing their unique aspects to this. Mm -hmm. And it's just so um, heartwarming. And like what you just said about gratitude, that sounds like such a um, quick and easy thing, but it is actually so much deeper. Uh, it just really goes, like each level gets deeper and deeper. And as you kind of sink into it, it you can feel the different um, depths of gratitude and it can really transform your life. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about this. It makes me just think of how grateful I am to Robin Wall Kimmer for writing that book. It's one I've read countless times. As you mentioned, Karen, the audio is so good. I feel like last year I just got it at this totally deeper level because we did it on the book club. Um, but yeah, gratitude for Robin Wall Kimmer, gratitude for all the students who came to book club, and gratitude for you for holding so much space for that too. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Karen, we are headed towards the end of this interview. It's been really fun to have this time with you, hear your thoughts on what it's like working behind the scenes here. And so either today or tomorrow, depending on exactly when people are listening to this, when this goes live, we are in the final stages of our enrollment period for Rooted Medicine Circle. And I know that there are people out there who are like still on the fence. They're just not sure if it's for them or just not, you know, they might be wondering like, is this, um, you know, is Rooted Medicine Circle really for me? And I would love to hear your totally unbiased opinion <laughs> of <laughs> what you would tell others. Um, you know, if somebody was saying like, I'm not sure, or I don't know, just what you would tell someone about Rooted Medicine Circle. <laughs> well, we should probably be really clear that I'm not particularly unbiased. I love this course. Mm -hmm. um, but I have worked with a lot of different courses and I've been in a lot of different courses. So I'm not just saying that from a superficial level. I really feel that Emily and Rosalie have done such an amazing job with this course. The nature connection aspects of this program they're gentle, they're consistent, but they're so deep over the trajectory of like the whole program. It's not a quick program. It's nine months. You get to really sit with things and you get to really like, there's some aspects that you revisit over and over and you'll see your own transformation through that process. And I just really cannot stress enough how that is so unique in so many herbal medicine programs that it's really a strong nature connection. And then our medicine making classes, I don't know, I think of it as um, <laughs> you talked about the taste of herbs class. What I really love about these medicine making classes is they really take you out of the book and into the kitchen <laughs> and mm -hmm. no one's that hopping along the way. You get to watch a video, prop it up in the kitchen with you, and it just has people moving. That flow is so different than book learning, and having a collection of recipes is very different than actually making uh, medicine in community. Mm. And then, of course, I'm the extrovert, so <laughs> got to bring in the social aspects of um, Root of Medicine Circle are layered into the program. And not everyone's as extroverted as I am. So there are low levels that you can get involved if you want, any kind of, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. But I like the full on all the layers <laughs> and love to facilitate uh, the meetups with other students. And um, that's just part of what I also notice a certain percentage of students are looking for that type of community. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for that type of community, we do provide that in a variety of ways. You don't have to be an extreme extrovert. Um, and there are just, you know, a variety of ways to do that, like I said. Well, lovely. Well, thank you for your opinions, biased or unbiased. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> and yeah, it's been so much fun just to hang out and talk with you about all this. And I appreciate sharing the nitty gritty and sharing 
um, yeah, just your, your take on things with community support here at Herbs with Rosalie. Thank you so much, Karen. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to get a transcript of this show. There, you'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch with me. As a reminder, we are in the final stages of enrolling Rooted Medicine Circle for 2024. If you're waiting for a sign to join, this is it. Visit rootedmedicinecircle.com to register today. And if you're here in this episode outside of the enrollment period in January, you can also visit rootedmedicinecircle.com to sign up on the wait list for next year. If you'd like more herbal episodes to come your way, then one of the best ways to support this podcast is by subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I'd also love to hear your comments about this episode. Was there anything surprising about behind the scenes here at Herbs with Rosalie? Do you have any big takeaways? I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get your very own gold star and this herbal tidbit. Well, I'll take any excuse to end podcasts with a favorite Robin Wall Kimmerer quote, and since we mentioned her book, Breeding Sweetgrass, which I hope all of you have read by now, I'll go ahead and share a powerful quote that I often turn to. We need acts of restoration, not only for polluted waters and degraded lands, but also for our relationship to the world. We need to restore honor to the way we live, so that when we walk through the world, we don't have to avert our eyes with shame, so that we can hold our heads up high and receive the respectful acknowledgement of the rest of Earth's beings. Robin Wall Kimmerer, Braiding Sweetgrass. <laughs>